Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a quick book haul. So I recently did a birthday book haul which were books that I kind of bought myself as a treat for my birthday in March and I didn't think about it at the time but then I ended up getting books from family members for my birthday and so now I'm going to be sharing some of the books that I got for my birthday in this like book haul part two. If I had thought about it, I probably would have put them all in one video, but I didn't, so we're going to share them here today. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Amy Marie, and I do tons of book content on this channel, especially in the mystery genre. So let's go ahead and hop into our first book. So this first one, I'm very excited. My sister actually picked these out for me, and she hadn't seen my 2022, like, to, to uh, TBR list that I had made that had talked about one of these books actually so very impressed with her picking these out on her own these are the Noodle Shop Mysteries series by Vivian Chen and so she ended up actually picking up the first three for me which I'm very very excited for so this first one is Death by Dumpling which I'm actually currently reading for another video so we'll be talking about that one pretty soon and the main character's name is Lana Lee and she recently has quit her job in like a big stormy like I quit like a very dramatic sequence and so she has started to work at her family's noodle shop mystery to pay her bills in the meantime and while she's working there this man ends up being murdered by these dumplings that she delivers to the the um noodle shop mystery or the, I'm sorry, the noodle shop that her family runs is in this, it's called Asia Village. It has all different types of like Asian shops and cuisine and grocery stores, that all that in this like one area. So she did a delivery with dumplings and delivered it to a man in the Asia Village and he ends up passing away, which puts a lot of heat on her and the cook at her family's shop. So she ends up going on a quest to try to figure out who did this and just trying to clear her family shop's name. So the second one then is called Dim Sum of All Fears. How cute is that cover? I love it. And the third one is Murder Low Main. So I am super excited for these. These are just, ooh, these are so exciting. I love cozy food mysteries in particular because I love to cook, I love to eat, what's not to love, I love mysteries. So these are exciting. I'm very, very, very excited for these. So that is the, the, uh, the first collection of books that I have here. And uh, next, we have a couple more from the Cupcake Bakery Mystery series. Most of the, I've read almost all 14 in this series, except for like three books in it because my library doesn't have them and they've turned down like my request to um, have them added to the collection. So I now have the Dying for Devil's Food and Pump, I always wanna say Dying for Devil's Food Cake, like I wanna fill in cake at the end but it's Dying for Devil's Food by Jen McKinley and Pumpkin Spice Peril by Jen McKinley. This is one of my favorite cozy mystery series ever. Jen McKinley writes fabulously. She also does the Library Lovers mystery series which I might love even more and I really 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 love the Cupcake Bakery series but I think that one's just slightly better. It's really it's debatable but if you love cozy food mysteries these are so good. So our main characters are Mel and Angie. They are best friends and their friend Tate is also kind of, it's kind of a trio. Um, but Mel and Angie run a place called Fairytale Cupcakes and as the name suggests they sell cupcakes and Tate is kind of in the background sometimes because he's an investor in their um, in their company. So the plot lines of course vary but they have different murders that are, go happen around town. Sometimes they travel and there are like food conventions and there's a murder. Um, let's see, this one here it looks like there is a high school reunion plot line which I'm interested in. I have a couple on my TBR that have like high school reunion plot lines but I don't think I've actually read one yet so I'm really excited for this. This one here involves a customer who was poisoned via the cupcakes so I'm very excited for these. The characters in this are truly super delightful. I don't find the setting as memorable as some of the other cozy mystery series that I really love like the Library Lovers series has a much more distinct setting to me but the characters in this are fabulous and the mysteries are always very well written and I love the cupcake element and the creativity with that. It's just the perfect mix of a good mystery but with the fun cupcake like slice of life moments so I'm excited for these very very excited for these I'm yeah I have I got a lot of reading to do and that's the <laughs> got a lot of reading to do okay next book so this next one's kind of interesting so my family uh, my parents actually took my husband and I to the renaissance fair to celebrate for my birthday and 
I really love that. I think there's renaissance fairs like all over the US and it's just really fun. It's it's you know it's like a fair that's themed like with renaissance you know knights and shining armor and princes and princesses and you know all that but they had a bookshop there and so I ended up picking this up for myself while I was there because it sounded really interesting and it's a historical fiction um, murder mystery I don't know if this is the first one they had a couple from this series I don't no so this is actually like book six in the series. They didn't have all six of them, otherwise I might have grabbed the first one. I think they only had two. But this is called A Play of Piety, a, I'm gonna try to say this correctly, a Jolife, or Jolith the Player Mystery. I'm gonna put that really close so you can read that there. But essentially, the uh, player Jolith, he's a, a player as in like a player on stage, like a theater player, and he ends up in this group of traveling performers, which I love the concept, you know, that's something that would be like, well, no, there's traveling performers nowadays, but it, it fits very well with the historical fiction, like Renaissance feel. How gorgeous is the font and like the work here? Like I, I love how pretty this back cover is, and the illustration on here, on front here is very very beautiful but unfortunately the traveling group that he's with the leader of the group falls ill so they kind of have to suspend their travel and stop working it sounds like for a bit so he ends up actually going to a charity hospital and Jolif the main character Jolif I'm so sorry I feel like I'm saying that name wrong um, Jolif has to help out with the patients at the charity hospital especially a woman called mistress Cicely Thorncoffin I'm going to take, take in that name. Mistress Cicely Thorncoffin. Is that not just, like, props to um, the author, Margaret Fraser, for coming up with that name? Because that, that's an epic name. <laughs> um, but basically, she is a very domineering patient there, and she's taking advantage of the system because her family has made some generous contributions to the charity hospital, so she's kind of dragging her feet and staying there longer than necessary, I guess, and like taking advantage of her status because of her family's donation. And so she's very domineering, she's always pushing the staff around, and she's always expecting to be like weighted on hand and foot much more than like other patients. However, it turns out that suddenly some patients are kind of dying off when they were expected to recover or be like, you know, let out of the hospital soon. So she ends up actually insisting after three patients end up kind of mysteriously dying, Mistress, Mistress Thorncoffin, she starts to loudly insist to Jolief and others who will listen that the fatal doses these patients are getting were meant for her and that she's the one who's actually like meant to die um, and it was like the murder target essentially so I thought this was just so many interesting elements and once I've won I like it sounds bad to say you like this I like in a fictional book of course to um I like the idea that the killer like keeps messing up and is not like is failing to kill their actual victim basically I find that to be interesting because that's kind of interesting to see like what happened where did where did they go wrong essentially or were they actually trying to kill these other people too who knows but essentially jolie has got to figure out what's happening here i like the idea of a charity hospital setting especially in like the middle ages i like the idea that he's part of a theater group and this does it is a two-time edgar award nominee so i have some pretty high hopes for this um yeah i'm i'm excited for this and if i like it there are at least six of this and this author has also written dame for for this, for I'm gonna, I'll put a picture on screen of one of the books, the Dame for for this medieval mysteries, um, including things like the novice's tale, the servant's tale, the outlaw's tale, the bishop's tale, and like another dozen or so listed mysteries. So she's got quite the list of ones here, and there's some rave reviews on the back here that she is an excellent writer for historical details. So I am. I'm really excited. This is going to be kind of like a fun memento for myself on my birthday and I've never read anything quite like this so I'm excited for this. Let me know if you've heard of this because I know some of these series you know I've talked about before they're more commonly talked about but I feel like I don't hear as much about like historical fiction cozies so let me know what you think. Next we have a gift from my parents. This was this is a American Mystery Classics and I think my mom actually saw this in my 2022 TBR list so this is actually Miss Pinkerton by Mary Roberts Reinhardt, and I'm really excited for this. This is this is supposed to be someone who is 
uh, Mary Roberts Reinhardt is supposed to be an excellent classic mystery writer. She's supposed to be pretty high up there in ranks like Agatha Christie. I know I mentioned her in my uh, TBR list this year and I know I had comments from at least one of you saying that you actually prefer her writing to Agatha Christie which is I think pretty high praise there and I'm really excited because I haven't read as many classic mysteries as I want to so very excited for this. Um, the general premise of this is that our main character sounds like her name is Miss Adams. She's a nurse. She's not a detective. However, a detective asks her to kind of be an agent on the inside of this home. Um, and he calls, he nicknames her, like dubs her Miss Pinkerton. That's kind of where the title comes from. But the premise here is that this man called Herbert Wynn, he is believed to possibly have committed suicide, but there's a lot of other possibilities that could have been, like there's a lot of reasons people would want him dead. So Miss Pinkerton starts to work as a, like an employee of the detective to try to put together clues and see what is it that they could be missing because the detective strongly suspects that this man did not actually commit suicide, so he's trying to bring justice to his case. So I'm super excited for this. I didn't really know where to start with Mary Roberts Reinhardt. If you have suggestions, I would love to know. This one just stood out to me when I was kind of like browsing through her works. This one sounded interesting, so I grabbed it. Um, so I put it on that list, like thinking it, you know, it would be good. Um, but if you have any specific recommendations for classic mysteries or any mysteries or especially any by her I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Another book that my parents got me that I'm very 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 excited for one is this not beautiful like oh <laughs> like it's so beautiful I will have everything linked down below um particularly this specific edition because it is if you have a mystery lover in your life or you're treating yourself this is stunning like it's it's I'm not, you know, I'm not a book um, artist, so I don't have all the terminology, but it's like, has like this beautiful raised feeling to it. It's got like layers of beautiful, like reflective material to make it look very like whimsical and mysterious. And so this is the classic tales of mystery. This is the Canter, Canter, yeah, Canterbury Classics edition. And this has a combination of a lot of great works by, again, classic mystery writers, which I'm excited for. So of course we have Agatha Christie in there. We have Edgar Allan Poe. We have Dorothy L. Sayers, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, J.K. Chesterton, Ernest Brahma, R. Austin Freeman, John Bo... Oof, I'm having a hard name, a hard time with some of these names, I'm sorry. Jules Verne, Richard Connell, Edgar Wallace. I'm... That's pretty. Look at that cover. It's beautiful. It kind of reminds me of the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, which might happen to be one of my favorite parts of the, the park because of the general look of it and the ride itself is amazing. But very excited for this. It has all these different classic mysteries and a lot of this book is 750 some pages long. So it does have like full length pieces in here. So I'm very excited. I'm already intrigued because one of them is called Room 13 and that's by Edgar Wallace. So I'm I'm excited. I'm this is just you will probably see this in my background at some point because look how I mean this is it's this is a beautiful book. It's it's so beautiful. I feel like I feel many things when I hold this. <laughs> and our last one here, this is actually a nonfiction book that I ended up kind of grabbing for myself <laughs> on my birthday. It's called Shorter. It's by Alex Sujong Kim Ping. Um, the general premise is work better, smarter, and less. Here's how I love, like I've read it twice in under six months from my library. His book called Rest, absolutely like a life-changing book about active rest and truly how to rest well. And like people always talk about work-life balance, but like how to rest productively so you can also work productively, like the balance between those. They don't, like people always talk about how to work productively, but they don't talk about how to rest efficiently and well to, so that you can do that. Like they don't talk about both sides of the coin. So that book was really good. That's, so ever since then, I've been really wanting to read his other book, Shorter, and my library doesn't have it. So I was like, okay, we're just, we're just gonna pick it up. So. I'm very excited for this. He backs up his writing really well with like scientific studies. It's very well written, very easy to read, highly recommend it. It's absolutely excellent. So that is my 
birthday book haul part two. I feel very very spoiled so thank you to all my loved ones who got me books i love and appreciate you supporting my book addiction and i will see you guys in my next video don't forget to like and subscribe for more content coming soon and i'll see you guys soon bye